Dear students, it's week five. We have one more week after this week and then you're done for the summer. So just hang on. We've only got one week to go after this. And your topic for this week is going to be practicing persuasive writing. Persuasive writing is the kind of writing that you do sophomore year and that you're going to be required to do for the English 2 star test. So we're, we're giving you a little bit of practice with that this um, this semester, this six weeks, so that you have a little bit of a head start. Your thought for the week was posted on a movie theater marquee that I thought was just perfect for encouraging everyone to uh, just have hope that this is going to be over soon. It says, this is just intermission, we'll see you soon. And I think that's so true. It, you have to think of it as a very temporary thing. You know, when you look back on your lives, it's going to seem like a little blip on your lifetime because it's it'll be such a short but very impactful experience. So uh, hopefully there'll be some really great things that have come out of this for you. So week five is all about persuasive writing. Um, it's not a lot of writing. You're just going to write a paragraph, but uh, it's good practice. So your checklist for this week is to watch the video and then you go to the, the doc that I put out there for week five project, review the instructions, review the example, and there's a great example that um, shows you how you're going to write yours with the color system. Don't forget to use that color system when you write yours, the blue, red, green, blue. Uh, you'll be using that next year too to practice your writing. And then when you're finished, you just click turn in. I wanted to show you an example of different types of rhetorical strategies. Uh, they're also called rhetorical appeals that are being used by Governor Andrew Cuomo. He's the governor of New York and he he does his daily briefings from um, Albany, New York, which is the, the capital of New York. That's where the governor is. And um, he does these daily briefings and uses logos, pathos, and ethos. And I wanted to show you a couple of examples of what that looks like so that you can see how you see this stuff all the time and you're just not aware of it. So listen to him talk as he begins to talk about the update on the uh, pandemic and what some of the results are, okay? And uh, see if you can tell which appeal he's using to start off here. Today is day 71 with a question mark. The number of hospitalizations today down. Great news. Number of intubations down. That's great news. The new COVID cases which is a different problem than the number of people who are in hospitals. This is how many new cases are showing up every day, um, which has been uh, still very high, is down to 521, and that is down. 521 takes us right back to where we started this hellish journey, right? Uh, March 20th is when we did the close down order. And where we are today is basically, with the number of new cases, is basically right where we were when we started. So uh, it has been a painful period of time between March 20th and May 9th. The optimist would say yes, but it's only March 20th to May 9th. Uh, the pessimist would say, but a lot of pain high cost, loss of life. Uh, the realist it would be somewhere in the middle. But so this last part, you know, where he's talking about the uh, the pessimist, the optimist, that would probably be considered pathos. But everything before that um, is all fact driven, right? He is showing the statistics of all the different COVID hospitalizations. And he also shows the, um, the deaths of uh, people who died from COVID-19. 
and also the infection rate. So he uses these graphs and numbers uh, which we consider logos, right? He appeals to people's desire to have facts, you know, just um, very specific details, concrete details about real things. And, um, and that's important to people in this situation because they want to know what is really going on out there, right? That's the important thing right now is that our leaders have to be really transparent, really forthcoming, really honest with us about what's going on. And this reflects honesty, you know, this kind of um, these, having numbers, this kind of fact, this set of facts is it, it reflects uh, a kind of transparency and honesty. Now this next part that he presents, it goes away from the idea of logos and it crosses over to pathos and you'll see why that is. And we keep going because we are New York tough, we are smart, united, disciplined, and we are loving. Every time I say we are loving, I think people must think that is such a strange word for a government official to be talking about, that we are loving. You never hear a government talking about loving. You never hear a lot of people talk about loving or love. But at this time, where we are all going through so much pain and so much stress and so much anxiety, and we're at a place where we've never been before, it's probably the one thing we need more than anything else. And it's not easy to talk about love. That's why I put it with New York tough. It's not easy to talk about love. I need love to show that vulnerability. It's hard to do that. That's why in some ways you have to be tough to be able to talk about love. But we all need it now because this is hard on everyone. It is hard. I don't care who you are. You can be the governor of the state, a health care worker, a public employee, a daughter of a governor, a son. It is hard on everyone. And love is the one thing that can make everything better. And the one thing we need. When I said today is day 71 with a question mark, because today is not really just day 71. Today is Mother's Day. And that dwarfs all else. Day 71, day 70, day 69, it's Mother's Day. And for me, you wanna talk about love the personification for, of love for me has always been my mother. Uh, my father was loving in his way, but he was not uh, warm and cuddly kind of loving. My mother has just always been pure love, just pure sweetness, pure goodness, pure affirmation, uh, unconditional love, whatever you did, however stupid I was and I can be pretty stupid. Just that total love of a mother. Uh, so today, more than anything else, mothers are special, special every day, but how about going through this? Uh, talking about nursing homes, you have mothers in nursing homes, families can't get to see them. Mothers have been doing double duty, stuck at home. Uh, dealing with all that stress, all that situation. Mothers who have lost mothers, mothers who we have lost during this uh, hellacious period where so many people lost their parents. So today is Mother's Day, first and foremost. So he goes into this idea of love, which is obviously a very emotional topic. And it, um, and the way he talks about it, you know, you have to be strong in order to talk about love. And then he crosses over into Mother's Day and how, you know, so that day is 
and his focus on that day is his ability to express love for his mother. And he goes on to talk to his mother. He actually has his mother on a Zoom call, um, and you can see them talking um, in this meeting. So um, he, you know, pays tribute to all the mothers. And, and this is really tugging at those heartstrings of the people watching this and really showing how he is a very gentle, kind leader. Um, and of course, we want facts, but we also want to know that the people who are in charge are loving people, that they care. And, uh, and that's where pathos comes in. And that's the impact of pathos. If you can show someone that you care um, and be a strong leader, then, you know, you really win people's hearts and minds. And that's what he has done with his meetings. He has really won people over with these daily briefings. So now it's your turn to practice your writing skills using some of those strategies uh, that, you know, I just showed you. Uh, there was one more. It is um, ethos. And in Andrew Cuomo's uh, presentation that he does every day, he does um, exhibit ethos when he brings up his background. Every once in a while he'll talk about various roles in government that he's had which makes him an authority on the specific things he's talking about. So um, that we call ethos. He mentions his expertise and his background so that we are confident in him as a leader that he knows what he's talking about. So let's go back to the purpose of this assignment. The purpose of this activity is to give you practice using the paragraph structure you have learned this year, the topic sentence, concrete detail, commentary, and concluding sentence, and to give you practice writing persuasion. Persuasive writing, so this is your definition, persuasive writing intentionally attempts to convince the reader to adopt an idea or opinion or to take action for a specific purpose. So, you know, when you're writing persuasion, you're really trying to convince something of some, something specific. Um, remember, when you write, you're going to use one or more of these strategic um, rhetorical strategies, rather. Uh, they are also called rhetorical appeals, ethos, pathos, or logos. You may have uh, a couple of them in your writing. And they usually come up in the concrete details. You know, when you, whatever you're using for your concrete details, that's usually where you're going to be using ethos, pathos, or logos. It's in the form of your evidence. So be sure you have your topic sentence, your concrete details, your commentary, and your concluding sentence. So here's an example for you. Prohibiting cell phones in schools would allow students to better focus on their classwork. So that's the topic sentence. So that's an argument or a claim that I'm making that prohibiting, that means banning cell phones in schools would allow students to better focus on their classwork. So I'm making that claim. Now I need to give you evidence to be able to back up what I'm saying, right? So if I'm going to persuade you that this is the right belief to hold about cell phones in school, then I need to give you some convincing concrete details so that um, you will feel the same way or I can convince you to feel the same way, right? So um, my concrete detail is from an article. In a recent CNBC article, research continually shows how distracting cell phones are so some schools want to ban them by Abigail Hess. Abigail Hess stated, Researchers found that students in schools with phone bans earned higher test scores and that lower performing students benefit the most. So the article gave some evidence uh, about some studies that were done about cell phone bans, right? And, and what the results were. That students got higher test scores and that lower performing students benefited the most. But I, I need to explain this and how then it proves my um, my claim up here. 
So this is my explanation or my commentary. The article cites studies that support the belief that removing phones in schools improves student performance regardless of students' academic abilities. In other words, students who do not have phones with them in class are not distracted by the constant vibrating and buzzing of their phones and therefore have a greater ability to focus on their lessons. And then I give my conclusion. Given the distracting nature of phones, it makes sense that banning phones would allow students to better focus on their lessons in, in the classroom. So this is the summary of my argument. It also harkens back to this topic sentence and supports that topic sentence. It does restate that topic sentence in a way, but it just um, gives the, um, the topic sentence in a more conclusive manner. Okay, so it's not really that much different than the kinds of paragraphs you've been doing. It's, um, it's just more persuasive. It's more your opinion, but you always have to have some kind of fact or good example. You know, in here I used logos, right? Because I used some studies. I used some factual evidence. You may use um, maybe an example of a real life situation that happened to someone. And um, that would be possibly using pathos um, which is valid too, as long as it's an example, some kind of a real example. Um, and then you always have to explain it and tie it back to your topic sentence. Okay, so no matter what you do. So this is an example of logos, but um, you can use any of the three or a couple of, you know, different appeals together. So now it's your turn, and in the box below, you're going to write your persuasive paragraph. Remember, this is your opinion based on evidence. And you can find your evidence anywhere on the internet. Just be sure if you do have, um, you're borrowing something from the internet, like I did here, that you tell where it's from. That's really important. And you'll have to page down to the second page to get the text box that you need to write in. And you can start writing. Don't forget to use your colors. Uh, looking ahead to your very last week, I put a little um, blurb of information here so that you can consider your final project. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your argument that you made about your topic, about your prompt, and your prompt is please explain in one paragraph why restrictions on social distancing should or should not be lifted. So. Um, this is what you're going to write your opinion about. This is your topic, okay? And um, and once you write that, you're you're going to have your evidence. You're going to have your rhetorical strategy, either ethos, logos, or pathos. And so you'll have all the material you need to create a, an advertisement, a public service announcement. And a public service announcement is just simply something that's informing the public. Um, and helping keep the public safe. And we, I will have some examples for you um, in the middle of the week. I'll be sending that assignment out so you can get a head start. But just think about what that ad might look like if you're going to create one. So it says for your last project during week six, you will create a public service announcement based on your belief about social distancing and what people should be doing to stay safe. You will use the same logos ethos or pathos argument, but this time you'll be putting it into an advertisement. So it'll be all visual with some text on it, of course. And so look for that in the middle of this week, which is week five, and then you can get a head start on that. And that's going to be your final assignment in, instead of um, having an exam. So be sure that you complete everything. If you are behind, Please try to catch up. I will be grading everything until probably right before I have to hand in report cards. So you have an opportunity to catch up, okay? And um, if you need any help with this, always try to contact me, either email me or through Google Classroom. So that's it for week five. You've watched the video. Now it's time to go to the doc for week five project and open that up. Review the instructions, even though I've talked about them. And then uh, review that example again. 
and then be sure that you use your color coding to write your paragraph. There's a prompt on there uh, that will get you started. Um, be sure you use the blue, red, green, blue color system fonts. And then click turn in when you're finished and that'll be it. Make it a great week. <laughs>